Hello everyone. Welcome back to our new series that is mastering in C++ STL. Specifically designed for Mang companies or any other product based company. So I welcome you all to this new series that is mastering C++ standard libraries. Actually, we are going to cover standard C++ standard library in this series. So, okay, uh, before starting on, uh, yeah, good, e uh, good evening, Mandeep. Nice to see you here in this series also. So, okay, before starting on, uh, let me tell you people, okay, uh, what is the benefit of this series and uh, what you will learn from this particular series. So, first of all, okay, th this series, this series will help you to build your base. This series will help you to build your base in C++ STL. C++ STL is nothing just a standard libraries. These are standard libraries, okay? Means these are in, in, in this standard library, we have lots of data structures. Inbuilt data structures are there like stack, queue, priority queue, set, map. They are inbuilt data structures are there, okay? So what is the benefit of having these inbuilt data structures? So if you, the benefit of you having this inbuilt data structure is that you can use them directly. You can use them directly to solve the problems. Let's suppose, okay, I'm coming up with a big problem. I need to solve a big problem. To solve the big problem, maybe I need to use stack, I need to use queue, I need to use set, map, whatever, I, whatever data structure I need to use. So this is not a good idea that, okay, I first of all, I write the code for the stack. First of all, I write the code for the queue. That is, itself is a big code, okay. Writing the code for this data structure will, means that will increase, that will actually increase the time taken to complete the project, okay. That will increase the time taken. So if we will be having these in build tools with us these libraries have all these data structures and many functions also many algorithms also like uh, sorting algorithm binary search algorithms there are many other algorithms are also available in built algorithms so we rather than writing our algorithm for sorting we can use the sort function directly which is implemented in this library so the so what i'm telling you is that c++ standard libraries are providing us lots of data structures and algorithms which is making the life of the programmer easier so we can solve the big problems by using these these inbuilt data structures and algorithms we do not need to again implement them okay and one more thing okay i can add in this is that these data structure and algorithms are developed in efficient manner okay so if i'm talking about sorting they, they, they had developed the sort function by using quick sort, which is one of the best sorting algorithm. Okay. So you do not need to worry about the complexity also, time complexity of these functions, which are already implemented. They, they, they are, these are already efficient. These are efficient. Okay. So we can directly use this data structure and algorithms. In this series, I, we will discuss about these inbuilt data structures and algorithms. So we will use them while solving the DSA problems then. We will use them. So this is just like a tool. We are learning the tool. We are going to learn the various inbuilt data structure and algorithms which are, which are available in this standard library. We are going to use them and we will use them while learning the DSA. Okay. So there is two part. Two part you need to do. First, you need to complete this series. So this, ser this series will help you, will make you master, will make you master. I'm going to cover almost everything actually. I'm going to cover whatever will be requiring for going for DSA, mastering DSA, whatever will be requiring. We will cover each and everything in this series. So this series is very small, means uh, four days this week and uh, maximum four days next week I will take. So in maximum eight days, we will complete the, this mastering C++ STL. So you will be having this new skill with you. New skill you will be having with you within two weeks, even eight days, I can say. You will be having new skill with you. And uh, after that, you will be ready to solve the problem. 
okay fa hi fazan before moving on okay again uh, please let me know if i'm properly audible or not fazan i think you are asking about sort function sort function is using quick sort or not actually sort function is using three three algorithms one is quick sort one is heap sort and one is insertion sort okay c++ sort function is made up of these three sorting algorithms okay fine thanks uh, abida for replying okay uh, so let's start with this series okay the uh, again uh, one last thing I'll, i want to share what is the benefit of this series you will be ready with this tool you will be ready with the c++ stl you will be ready and you can use that different data structure already available data structure you will be able to use them while learning the dsa so we'll be having you will be having this skill even i have seen that many companies not i'm not not talking about means uh, big companies but uh, many other companies paying good salaries to the people who are good at one particular language okay if you are good at python people are hiring okay even uh, if you have 2 3 year experience then you will get good salary actually and uh, if you are learning c++ then uh, this is another tool means if you know c++ if you are mastering it again you can get the you can get the job directly based upon this course itself based upon this course you can get the job i'm not uh, talking about main companies but still you will get the job just based upon this course so i'm just telling the benefit one benefit is that it's like a tool you can use it to learn the dsa okay you will be knowing this then this will be easier for you to means uh, learn the problem solving skill okay problem solving skill in the dsa will, that will be easy for you because you will be having a tool and if you are not learning the dsa itself still there are many company who are looking for a specific language either python java c++ so you will be having mastering in two weeks in c++ stl actually okay so this will benefit you to crack the company or direct direct company also you do not need to go from dsa even but uh, i cannot say for the product based company but still you will be uh, this will benefit you to place to get the placement still single this series itself this series itself okay fine and uh, what is the prerequisite what is the prerequisite for this uh, this series actually you need to know basics of the c++ like uh, how to write if else how to write functions how to set uh, how to pass the value through functions so uh, how to write the loops so basic stuff you need to know even you don't know you can check out on internet and you can where you can you can learn that in one day i believe you can learn that in one day you can go through the structure you need you need to just see the syntax how for loop is working how function is working how if else all that stuff is working okay that is the only thing required for this series okay let's try to master ourselves in c++ stl within two weeks this week and next week okay fine so let me share the syllabus for this series so i will discuss today a little bit about the introduction to c++ stl then uh, i will cover these three topics the target is this the target is this that okay we complete the template iterators and pairs and uh, tomorrow i will cover the vector and list so this is the target means uh, we will try to cover these two topics then stack queue these are inbuilt data structure means i will use the inbuilt data structure and we will solve the main company problems we will solve the main company problem dq data structure priority queues so these see this is a uh, uh, build on the heap data structure so rather than implementing the heap data structure we can directly use this priority queue okay and uh, this is build up this set and multi set is build up on the balanced tree balanced balanced binary search tree actually okay and this is uh, uh, this uh, uh, and this is actually also implemented on balanced binary search tree these two people are implemented with the help of hashing hashing so means 
these are very important concepts like hashing, balanced binary search tree, heap. Already, uh, we do not need to implement them separately. These are already available in, in the form of inbuilt data structure with us. We can directly use them. And there are many other algorithms available like sorting, binary search, lower bound, upper bound. There are many other algorithms available with us. So we can directly use them rather than writing the sorting algorithm. We can use the sort function directly. Okay. So we will use all these inbuilt data structures, all these inbuilt data structures and, and algorithms in this course. We will be master at, at that. Okay. We will be master at that. So, uh, who can join this course? So, even you are in first year, you are welcome to this course. You just uh, make sure that, okay, if you know the if, else, for loop and function, basic structure of, of, if you know C, you can come here. If you know Java, you can come. You can take this knowledge also. You can be good at C++ HTML also. Even you know, if you know uh, Python still, you are welcome. Because basic structure knowledge is required. After that, you will be master at this because I'm going to cover everything means from the STL. You will not find out uh, this much material even in the paid course. This is my promise. You will not find, this is my promise. You will not find out the even the material which will be I'm covering over here in this free course that uh, you will not find out even in the paid course. Okay. You can register for this course. Go to the description. Register for this course uh, and uh, you will get also get certificate. If you will be completing all the videos then all the lectures you, you will be taking, then you will get the certificate also. Okay, fine. Okay, let's move move with today's target. This is my today target. Let's see how much we are able to cover up. Let's see. Let's move on. The more the uh, the requirement the the more the main requirement for this course will be the main requirement for this course will be. You, I will ask questions from you. I will ask lots of questions from you. You need to reply. That will be the main prerequisite for the for actually actually for my every class. That is the prerequisite because the moment you try, the learning happens. Le learning start happens when you try, not I try. If I will try, that uh, will not uh, create the magic. The magic will happen only when if you will try. So I will ask you lots of questions. You need to reply. Okay, this is the prerequisite. This is the prerequisite. Let's start with the introduction to C++ STL. Hello, hi, hi, Devya. Nice to see you back. Hello, Vikas. Okay, uh, so let's start with the very basic. I'm going. I'm not uh, expecting anything from you people. So. What is C++ STL? STL stands for Standard Template Library. So STL, Standard Template Library, is a set of C++ template classes which provide the inbuilt data structures. So this uh, library is providing us inbuilt data structures and algorithms. Okay. So like uh, inbuilt data structure like vector, list, stack, queues, and priority queues. So these are inbuilt data structures available with us. We can use them. And uh, functions like algorithms like sort, sort, binary search, various algorithms, inbuilt algorithms are available in this library. We are learning in this course how to use them, how to use them. That's it. So this is the definition okay, of the STL. And uh, what is the use of this? What is the benefit? This saves the coders time. This will save the programmer time. Okay. So that can, uh, he or she can focus on tougher problems. So he can, uh, they can directly use the, these data structure rather than implementing them first, then using them. It's better they, uh, for tougher problem, let's have the inbuilt data structures and let's use them directly for tougher problems. This will save the coders time actually. Okay, fine. Starting from very basic, we will go till each and everything. These are the four components with which we will cover in this course actually. They are, these are the components of C++ STL. First one important one is the iterators. Today we will discuss about completely we will finish the iterators. 
and uh, this is the mo most consuming part containers like uh, in containers uh, like stack vectors list queue these are containers container which which can store the data which can store the data container so this will consume the maximum lectures actually okay so we will study all the data structures in this algorithms like uh, sort binary search lower bound upper bound we will discuss about different type of algorithms functors these are functors these are not functions these are functors uh, uh, these will also be i will show you the use of these functors these are actually object of class objects they have some functionality i will i will try to combine them with the algorithm and uh, i will show the function of these also to you so these are the main, these are the components of the c++ stl today we will cover the iterators today we will cover the iterators and one container also today we will cover that is the a pair if we get the if we get time then we will cover pair container also okay fine any doubt which is coming to your mind you you need to ask that okay you should ask the doubt that is important you are in live class so that is the what is the benefit of live class if you are asked you can ask the doubt directly so please ask the doubt that will make your life easier my life easier and the life of other people also easier because the same question they also have but they are not asking that's it okay uh, this is uh, the these uh, containers will be taking our maximum time further containers can be divided into sub categories like uh, sequence containers associative containers un unordered associative containers and uh, odd uh, container adapters so sequence container like array vector dq list forward list these are sequence container elements are coming one after the another like that associative container elements are associated with each other okay set multi set map multi map unordered the elements are not in ordered manner they are in not in ordered manner in this associative containers so these are unordered unordered associative elements are associative with each other we will see okay and these are the container adapters so these are uh, these are these are implemented over the sequence adapter actually so like uh, stack is implemented using vector okay so like that these are implemented over the sequence adapters so these are given the name container adapters container adapter fine so we will cover this this in future lectures we will keep covering them one by one one by one but today we are not talking about the containers today we will talk about the today we will talk about the template first okay first thing template so if you notice the name of the stl stand stl standard template library standard template library what is template in c++ template is, is a, what is template so like a template same function for multiple data types so if you are using the same function for multiple data types that can be this thing can be implemented with the help of template template like it's like a frame okay so let's suppose i have a photo frame with me and uh, in this photo frame you can uh, put uh, one one picture like this or you can put the picture of this is the okay let's suppose this is the boy picture you put and in the same frame you can put the picture of a girl also the same frame you can put the picture of the mother also or the father also so there is a frame one template is uh, one but uh, you can use the different you can uh, use them Uh, with different data types okay and c++ stl is is itself standard template library so this actually use the template so much i will show you i will show you let's move on let's see what are templates in c++ stl specifically so what the definition okay we can define the template at the blueprints for creating generic generic class and functions generic class and function means which can accept any type of any type of data maybe integer float character string so they can accept multiple type of data same function same function is accepting the integer also same function is uh, accepting as a parameter string also same function is accepting as a 
character also let's see how okay one more thing we do not need to write the same function method for different data types with the help of templates templates uh, actually help us that okay we do not need to write the same function with different data type if we are passing different data type for example okay let's see the use of template in c++ stl use of template in c++ stl for example uh, this is a dynamic array we will discuss about the vectors okay we will discuss about that but one thing you can notice is that in this data structure in this data structure this is a dynamic array okay we will discuss tomorrow about the, more about the vectors in this uh, dynamic data structure this that the type of data this will store is integer the type of data this will store is integer see the uh, c++ library is using the see, c++ library is using this function vector function it's passing the integer also it's passing the character also different data types for the same function or same class that is passing on different data type integer character okay maybe there there may be other also like string you are passing to the same vector you are passing integer character string so at the back end at the back end stl is using the stl use stl is using the templates stl standard library is using the templates there can be float also different data types you are passing to the same person this is happening with the help of templates i don't tell you how this is happening so okay let me tell you that thing how this is happening let me show you with one example i will show you template in template template is not that much uh, important from from our point of view uh, okay there is some question in here let me take first that okay mm, one question is from mandeep mandeep is asking what is priority queue priority queue is uh, if you know about the heap heap data structure min heap or max heap if you know about them min heap or max heap so priority queue is implementing min heap or max heap uh, priority queue is putting the smallest element to the top smallest element is put at the starting at the top in priority queue data structure this is a data structure okay and what is the benefit of priority queue the element which is smallest that is at the, at the top so if you need some data structure who can tell you who is the smallest out of all of you every time you are asking the same question in the class who is smallest out of all of you people who have who have the minimum age so if you are putting all the students into the priority queue then that student minimum age student will be at the top every time you can access that in constant time you can access the minimum age student in constant time so priority queue is a data structure which is storing the data such such like that the minimum element will be at the top okay and uh, actually maximum ca element can be also be at the top either minimum or maximum either minimum or maximum like min heap or max heap so it's a data type it's a data type which is helping us to find out the minimum element or maximum element in constant time constant time that's it fazan is asking something fazan is saying our container some classes or super classes uh, containers are the data structures containers are the data structures which have uh, which have these are classes you can say okay these these further have functions these further have functions you can apply the different functions over that you can apply the different functions like uh, you can top function is there in the stack or front function or back function like there are different type of functions directly you can apply on the containers container are the data types you just need to know this thing that okay container are the data types inbuilt data inbuilt data structures inbuilt data structure fine okay fine okay let me give you example of one template let's try to build the template let's try to build one uh, one template so here i have one example already with me control plus let me increase the font so that you can people see easily here what we have done is we have defined a template function we have defined a template function 
so this is a keyword okay template is a keyword and uh, this is also a keyword this is a name of our uh, data type now that can be anything so we define a function okay my max we define a function and in this function i am passing two parameters and what will be the data type of them the data type of them is not declared this, this function can receive now any data type this function can receive now any data type okay for example this is our driver code this is our driver code and we are calling this function we are calling this max function fine we are calling this max function and in this max function we are passing two values 3 and 7 before that we are telling that okay uh, the data type the data type will be of integer type whatever parameter i will pass that will be of integer type so i i just declare one function i just declare one function i do not mention the data type i do not mention the data type so firstly i am passing the integer to this function 3 and 7 are the integers that will do some processing and that will return the value same function i am calling same function i am calling this time i am passing two characters this time i am passing the characters so this will receive the character also earlier that was this same function is receiving the integer now the same function is receiving the character same function is receiving the characters okay so this is the benefit of the template what is the benefit same function can be used for different data types to receive the different data type like our vector was also receiving integer float string character the vector was also receiving all that stuff and uh, this is inbuilt okay this uh, this is user inbuilt data uh, user inbuilt function template function which is receiving to, just we are trying to show that okay which is receiving two type of data one is integer one is character type of data same function receiving different type of data so this is happening with the help of template and uh, standard library stl is using this feature this template feature to implement various uh, uh, various other data structures actually like uh, vectors stack array all different data structures are actually implemented with the help of template so that we can store any type of data to them we can store integer also we can store float also in the vector we can store uh, string also whatever data type we can store in that that is happening behind the scene with the help of template i just show you one example okay how template works just to give you the idea you, okay okay can you people tell me what is the output of this code can you try can you try and tell me what is the output of this code please try that is important if you are trying or not that will be the important part if you are trying or not that there will be the actual learning will happen i can promise one thing after two weeks this week and next week you will be master in c++ stl just give a try right or wrong doesn't matter right or wrong doesn't matter that should not matter in class okay uh, divya is replying 7 divya pass 3 uh, and 7 into this function so x value is 3 and y value is 7 actually this is the ternary operator we are using over here this is checking is the 3 greater than 7 no this is wrong this is false if this is false then we will return the y value the y value is 7 okay so we return the 7 so yes this will print 7 and uh, again we are comparing we are passing two character one is c one is g one is uh, one is c one is g we are passing to this function again this is this function is just telling which number is greater which is greater not number which is greater either that can be a number or that can be a character so this will compare c or g actually c is not greater than g so this will return g this will return g ternary operator, operator we are using so this will print actually g this will print g see this is also returning the same data type which we mention over here returning the same data type which, which we mention over here the only thing you need to take from here is that with the help of templates we can pass different type of data and this feature is used by the stl to implement all the 
different data structures stack queue priority queue all data structures are implemented all the algorithms also are implemented with the help of the templates this template because we can pass in the for example in the vector we can pass integer also we can pass character also there can be a, this can be a vector of character this can be a vector of string so this is receiving all different type of data and this is happening at the back end with the help of templates this is the only thing you need to know don't need to worry so much about the template the name is template standard template library that's why i explain this thing otherwise you will not use it while solving the problems so let me run this code let me check out if the fazan and divya is right or wrong let me run this code let's see the output so here is the output so yes uh, 7 and g is the output that is i think visible to you people yes 7 and uh, g this is printing just the large value which one is the large either that can be a number or that can be a character fine okay just i tell you one thing even just you need to know one thing till now standard stl is using the templates at the back end to accept different type of data with different type different data structures okay different inbuilt data structure that's it this is the only thing you need to know that's it fine okay now let's move to the iterators which we will actually use now let's move with the iterators actually which will be actually use uh, when you will uh, if you are going for dsa or in this complete series actually we will be using the iterators we will be using this thing what what are these iterators iterators are just the like uh, pointers actually iterators are just like pointers which will point which will point to the elements inside the data structures inside now i will not use the word data structure actually in place of data structure i will use the word containers i will use the word containers like stack is a container queue is a container priority queue is a container set is a container so rather than calling them data structure we here in standard library we have specific name for them these in, these are inbuilt data structures so we call them containers we call them containers so in containers like in stack or in queue to point out one element so we use some pointers so these pointers are specific have specific name known as iterators which is pointing to the particular element in the containers oh okay in the data structure whatever you can call so let's talk about the iterators which is important starting from the definition iterator is just like a pointer just like a pointer they are not pointer they are not pointer there is a difference between iterator and pointer iterator are just like a pointer which that points to an element inside the container that points an element inside the container they are just used for pointing we will use them like uh, for example this is our vector in this vector this iterator okay this iterator begin iterator is pointing to the first element this end iterator is pointing to the element which is passed to the last element okay uh, actually there are some functions also like begin function and, and end function these generate the begin iterator this generate the end iterator we will use them so simple right now i just show you that, that okay these are pointers iterators are the pointers which is pointing to some location in our container in our data structure or container you can call okay fine and what is the difference okay sometimes uh, people ask what is the difference between iterator and pointer so technically speaking okay uh, pointers are actually uh, pointer can cause the problem of memory leak actually pointer have some drawbacks Uh, that's why pointers are removed from the java also due to security reasons and uh, like a memory leak problem and all that so to uh, overcome those problems again we are using iterators so we can use pointer like uh, to uh, iterate through the elements in a in a data structure so in place of that stl introduced the concept of iterators which will not cause this problem memory leak problem which is uh, created by the pointer and uh, uh, this is the one of the 
main problem we face like like uh, checking uh, array out of bound like we we with the help of pointers we try to access the memory which is not even available to us which is not even available to us we try to access the element which is out of the array out of the range of the array okay so this type of problems also handled by some some of the iterators okay I I iterators some iterators even handles the perform the bound checking means we are not going to access the element which is out of our data structure so this ensured this make the safety okay so iterators uh, actually overcoming the problems of the pointers otherwise they are same they are just uh, having the address of that location having the address of that location but uh, they have some limitations with them and due to that they are safe to use okay and uh, they do not create the problem of like memory leak also there's a just just a difference between iterator and pointers that's it there's a difference between iterator and pointer divya is asking okay divya is asking uh, for uh, fazan is also asking something okay i'm coming to that before that okay divya is asking what is memory leak memory leak let's suppose uh, uh, you reserve some memory you reserve some memory uh, and uh, you forget its address okay now you are not using it you 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 are not using it okay let's suppose you reserve some memory you reserve some memory uh, in a function and after that uh, your code is running you come out of that function your code is running but you are not using that memory anymore you reserve the memory your program is running you reserve the memory now you are not using it anymore you come out of that function in which you in which you reserve that memory you come out even out of that function you do not need that memory anymore but still you have reserved the memory the memory is reserved for your program but you are not using it but you are not you you come out of that function okay you come out of that function so this is known as memory leak this is known as mem you you leak some memory your program leak some memory which is not using which is not using he uh, the program is not using that memory but reserve that okay so this problem will not occur with the help of iterators and uh, so this this was the structure of the template uh, you need to follow that structure which i shared with you if you want to go with the template okay template do not need to worry about that much about that just just i show you that thing so that uh, to tell you that okay uh, stl is using the templates okay i just show you that thing that's why otherwise you will not use it don't need to worry i'm talking about divya i'm talking about uh, c++ right now here uh python we will not about, talk about the python and uh, java over here okay python uh, th this is this have different concept python have different concept okay uh there is no concept of iterator in python there is no concept of iterator in python okay okay bishal is asking one more question you can ask your questions okay please keep asking the question also sir i have knowledge of c is c++ similar to c yeah c++ is similar to c c++ is uh, obj object oriented version of c it's a object oriented uh, we just add the oops con concept inside the c and that become c++ and after that we add this the c++ stl in c in c++ we add the stl libraries we add which make it more useful actually and we are talking about c sharp c sharp uh, is actually uh, is c++ c sharp and c++ syntax are same uh, they are same only but c sharp we use for mainly for like uh, we use c sharp dot net like with dot net platform we use the c sharp and c c++ we use for mainly c++ we use uh, for the uh, embedded system programming okay embedded system programming we use c++ mainly and uh, c sharp we use for the uh, with the dot net platform web development
can we use the c can we use c in the back end you can use the c c syntax in the c++ compiler yes you can use the c c syntax in c++ compiler bishal okay fine if any doubt keep asking that otherwise i am moving on so let me show you the syntax of the how to define the iterators iterators till now i just tell you iterators are the iterators are just uh, like a pointer which is pointing to a location inside the inside the container container can be vector stack queue whatever container is that so they are pointing to some location in those containers those data structures so how to declare those iterators so this is the syntax for that let try to understand this with the help of one example so like uh, first we need to write the container name so this is the container name on which for which we are declaring the iterator iterator will help us to go to go through to access the elements of this container so i'm defining a iterator i'm defining a iterator for this container for vector container so first thing in the syntax is the name of the container second thing is the data type what is the data type of that container third thing again is the iterator is a keyword this is again is a keyword and the last thing itr is the name of the iterator is the name of the iterator that's it so four things are there the container name the data type of the container and this is the iterator is the keyword which we use to declare the iterator okay and colon colon this is the syntax how we how we define a iterator what is iterator nothing just a just like a pointer like a thing which will help us to access the elements let's we will see how to use them this is another example okay now i change the i change the container now this time the container is list okay and its data type is integer and this is the keyword again same thing keyword data type container is list now this is the iterator name which is used which will be used to iterate the element in this container in this list there can be you can define the contain iterator for different type of containers so set is another container or another data structure you can call map is another container or another data structure you can call so the we are defining just the different we are defining the iterators for different data structure you can call okay containers for different containers so this is the syntax how we declare the iterators that's it fine okay let's try to practice them let's go for the practice let's uh, go for the practice let me open a new window over here duplicate window so now let's try let's learn how to use the iterators let's learn how to use the iterator okay i'm uh, i'm removing this element from here to a uh, header file you can use is act actually uh, that will be helpful for you one will be the bits std c++ dot h this header file include all the all the header other header files which will be like uh, the header file for defining other data structures like vector stack queue and various algorithm sort function you do not need to write separately the header file other header files this uh, include this include actually this header file include all the other header files so you can use this one no doubt this uh, will uh, slow the this will uh, take little more time because this include other header files but this uh, is this is this is basically used by the programmers competitive programmer basically because they don't want to waste their time to know to write the to write the header files for different data structures okay and one another thing you we uh, you need to use is namespace one another thing is using the namespace using name space this will also actually help us to reduce to 
we will we do not need to use the std with the std is a library okay uh, we do not need to use it again and again in our program whenever we need to use any data structure which is part of this standard library std we do not need to mention that thing that thing again with uh, if we are writing this line using namespace okay that will be automatically will be replaced over there fine okay Mandeep, dockers and uh, docker and container that is different concept okay dockers and containers in cloud that is different concept here uh, uh, containers are different thing okay i think dockers you are talking about those are different thing in the cloud cloud they use the word container for different stuff okay dockers and container containers here containers are nothing just the data structure that's it containers are nothing just the containers are the thing just the data structure in c++ stl okay fine divya uh, define it uh vishal uh, you can uh, uh, you need to use c++ compiler i just uh, take it from the internet one uh, one gdb compiler you can take any other compiler and uh, you can start coding in that you need to take c++ compiler in c++ compiler you can write the c code but in c compiler you cannot write the c++ code okay c++ compiler have all the features of the c compiler but c compiler don't have the feature of c++ so if you will print uh, print something then print of statement can be used here but not in uh, but c out statement will not be used in the uh, c compiler fine okay let me let me uh, so we need to go a long way so uh, what i'm doing right now is i'm writing some code here okay i'm declaring one vector so i'm directly taking that and you please check out this thing you need to tell me you need to tell me what is the output of this code okay see first i declare a vector vector is nothing just a vector is nothing just the dynamic arrays the name of this vector is vec this is the name of the vector vec and that is its data type is integer and this is the keyword vector is a keyword it's an array only we store five elements in this dynamic array that's it okay fine now i'm declaring a vector i'm declaring a iterator see i'm declaring a iterator so this is how we learn how to declare the iterator this is how we declare the iterator container name data type colon colon keyword iterator and name of the iterator name of the iterator is it name of the iterator is it now we will use this iterator to access the element in this container in this vector container in this da data structure we will access the element okay so let me write directly i'm taking the code so i'm just printing the code okay i'm just printing the elements in this vector now i'm printing the element in this vector with the help of this iterator it iterator so we declare the iterator over here declare the iterator iterator and uh, now with the help of this iterator it iterator we we uh, this is now pointing to the first element this is now pointing to the first element okay so this is a vector okay let me create a vector over here slowly slowly you will be connected just keep, uh, keep stay with me and uh, you will be good at it okay so we just declare a this is a vector this is a vector which is having a name vec fine this is a dynamic array okay and uh, we know now we know that how to declare the iterators iterator is nothing just the just like a point just like a pointers which will point to different elements in this container okay fine so we declare the iterator and after that uh, we there is two there is two common functions like begin and end if we are calling the begin function then uh, this will return the address of the first element this will return the address of begin begin first element and uh, we are storing it into the 
IT iterator. In this iterator, we declare this iterator over here, and we are storing the address of first element in this iterator. Okay, we can store because uh, uh, this is returning the address of the same vector, and uh, this is also of vector type iterator. This is also vector type of iterator. So simply here we just uh, take the starting address and we will iterate till we do not reach to the end actually this end function this end function will return the address of the of the of this position what is this position this is the position after the last element so this is the last element but end function will return the address of the return the address passed to the last passed to the last element okay this is might be little weird but okay this is how end function work end function return the address of not the last element but uh, the address of next element with after the last so this will point out here so we will start from the beginning and uh, we are going till the end and we are iterating through all the elements that's it and we are just after that we are printing the elements we are printing the elements okay fine like starting from the beginning with the help of this iterator going till the end incrementing we can perform increment operation on the iterator so if we will perform it plus plus iterator plus plus then this will move to the next location and uh, this d reference operator star operator will print the value at this location at this iterator just like a pointer just like a pointer this will print the value whatever value over here so in this loop actually we start from the beginning going up to here and uh, printing the values at all the locations printing the value at all the location that's it so can you tell me okay can you tell me what will be the output of this code please try please try and tell me what will be the output of this code don't worry we i have lots of examples with me slowly slowly everything will be clear you just keep trying please tell me according to you according to you what will be the output for this code according to you first of all tell me the output then i will come to divya question divya is asking okay what is the difference between plus plus iterator and iterator plus plus at this moment of time there is uh, no difference at this moment of time there is no difference otherwise this will first increment the iterator okay this will this first increment the increment it and then perform that actually this is same as these two statement statement same as this thing okay this is same as this thing you are just adding one here adding one in the iterator okay but it's like okay you are first if you are if you are printing let's suppose you want you want to see out this thing let me print something over okay let me print the, these two value so this will print the let's suppose it value is 10 so this will first increment it to 11 and then print this will print 11 and this will first print and then increment okay this will this will first print and then increment okay so this is post increment this is pre increment for here there is no no difference this will not create the an impact because uh, uh, the, we are not uh, this is not making any impact inside the loop this will not make any impact inside the for loop you can check out so here you can consider it just we are incrementing the iterator okay what is the output so fazan and divya and uh, anwar is saying that this will print one to five let's check out if these people are saying right or wrong so let me execute this code and yes we are printing one two three four five now little bit idea you must be getting that okay we take a iterator just like a variable we take a uh, index variable like uh, if you are accessing a element element of the array you take a index variable i and you keep 
processing accessing the elements so here iterator is pointing to first this element then this then this then this then this, this. this with the help of this loop we are just printing all the elements at different location that's it so this is just i show you how to use the iterator okay this is the iterator i just show you for the vector let me take another iterator let me take one another iterator let me modify this code i am writing the iterator with other container with one another container so that you will little bit get more insight i am taking another con container that is the list container list container just another data type i take we take another data type we take another data type list okay list is another data type we take this is storing the actually list is a double link list list is this data structure is implementing the double link list we, we will discuss about all of these data structure in our future classes list and vectors we will discuss more detail in tomorrow class today you just check out okay this is another data structure which is storing some elements now we need to declare the we need to declare okay let me write how we will write the iterator for the list so list first of all the container name after that its data type and after that okay colon colon and there is a after colon colon then a keyword iterator and after that iterator name so let's suppose iterator name is it again iterator name whatever iterator name you can use itr let's suppose iterator name is itr so we just define an iterator for this this container fine so let me now print i am just taking the co code over here and because this is the same code just we discuss earlier the printing i am just printing i am printing the elements okay i am printing the elements now See, same thing I just use this iterator. Use the begin function, starting from the first element, going till the end, going till the end, incrementing the iterator every time, and uh, whatever is the value I'm printing with the help of this star. This star you can, this star have different names. This star, you can call it uh, D reference, D, D reference, D reference operator, D reference. Or you can call it value at value at operator. So this is just like you can read it like value at this iterator, value at this address. So first that will be one, then value at this will be two, value at this will be three, value at this is four, then five. So this is printing all the elements. This is printing all the elements. Fine, okay. So just I till now I just tell you how to declare the iterators. and uh, how we are using them to go through different elements of that container so every container for every container we can declare a iterator okay for every container we can declare a iterator okay let me let me go to the, my ppt and uh, let me show you one more thing over here so this this might be hectic to write this complete line to declare the iterator this complete line we use these two okay you can write for other other containers also the iterators you can write the same way syntax is same but there is one shortcut way you can use the auto keyword also you can you use auto keyword and you can directly declare the iterator you can declare the iterator directly by using the auto keyword rather than mentioning all this complete line you do not need to write this complete line do not need to write this complete line do not need to write replace this part with the auto so auto will accept all the data type of all the data type okay so this will create the iterator for all different data types so what you can do okay let me make little changes let me go back to our previous program so rather than declaring this this iterator over here what you can do you can write auto you can write auto we will be using this auto we will be using this auto we will not declare the iterator now on word like this because this is little hectic to write this a big statement we will just write the uh, auto keyword so this will uh, create a iterator or and uh, we can use this means uh, uh, 
to iterate the elements. Okay, auto give us the flexibility. We do not need to declare any data structure. We do not. We can use the auto in place of that. So if we run it, if we run it, then still this is giving the same answer. One, two, three, four, five. So now onward, what I want to tell you is that. Although this is this is the standard way to declare the iterators. This is a standard way to declare the iterators. But now onwards, I'm not going to use it. I will delete. Just tell you, uh, maybe at some some many places you may find it that that way they are declaring the iterator. But uh, most of the time, you will see in the code they are using the iterator, declaring it with the help of auto. Auto, they are taking the help of the auto. Auto. With the auto, we do not need to use define any keyword anything. Okay, so this will shorten our declaration, and that that that's why actually Excel is useful. Excel is actually uh, reducing our task. Okay, and uh, we can use auto in place of that big line for anyone like our previous code also for vector also we can do the same thing for vector also we can do the same thing. Okay, like I can write vector over here. Vector, and uh, let's suppose vector name is my list. Then that's it. We can run it. See the uh, the same code is same iterator is now running for the vector. Same iterator is now running for the vector. Same iterator. We do not need to declare separate iterator for vector, separate iterator for list. Same iterator is working actually. Okay, fine. Any doubt till now? Please ask. Any doubt? Till now, please ask. So we, ju I just uh, tell you what is iterator and uh, how to declare them. And uh, first, I tell you it, this is a standard way to declare the different type of iterator, which is used to iterate the elements of different containers. But rather than writing all that stuff, you can replace them with the auto itself. That uh, you will we will be key, this short way so we will use it uh, for na most of our programs we will use it fine okay now let's see different type of uh, iterators different type of iterators i am going in very detail and i because i mentioned in this series that i will go through each and every concept okay might be you might be feeling that okay i'm covering in too much depth yes i'm covering in too much depth because I have already uh, made the promise that all all the data structures and all the containers, all this stuff, all the complete C++ STL, I will cover in very detail. Okay. And uh, after that, you will be master in that because there will be nothing left. So I'm going in very, very detail. And uh, But you do not need to worry only two weeks and uh, this course will be finished and you will be master in C++ STL. Okay. So that, that thing is required. You need to stay with me till the end of this series. That will be the challenging task, actually. And this happens, actually, every, uh, most of the time. The main problem happens is that, OK, we do not remain consistent. So that is the main thing. OK, so these are the different type of iterators, like input iterators. The five type of iterators are there, input, output, forward, bidirectional, random access. Okay, uh, like uh, I can tell you, okay, like input iterators with the help of input iterators, we can access the element. Whatever, if, if iterators are nothing, they are, they are just like array, they are just like arrow pointing to some location. Okay, and input, input iterators are pointing to some location. We can read the data from there. Okay, we can take the input, but these iterators cannot write the data at that location. So let's suppose this is the location pointed by this input input iterator. Then uh, we can read the data from here. We can read 10, but we cannot update it with 20. So input uh, input iterators have limitation like this. Output operate, uh, iterator can update the data, update the data, but cannot read this data, cannot read this data. Forward have the feature of these two. We will not use these two actually, let me tell you. Most of the time you will be using uh, this bidirectional and this random access. Forward 
can be used for like for uh, in the case of link list one after the another you want to access the elements if you want to access the element in forward list in link list then you will use the forward iterator bi directional iterator when you will use let's suppose you are you have doubly linked list you want to move forward and backward also in your data structure then the iterator which you you will use will that will be bi directional iterator if you want to access the data directly random access like in the array you want to jump to like to fixed location let's suppose fifth location directly you want to jump like in this array a r r then in that case you will use the random access iterator okay random access randomly you can access any element so right now from this ppt what is the take away the take away is that there is five type of iterators these are the basic one and the feature of these two are or are inside this one iterator you can see uh, this is inside itself and bi directional have the feature of this this and this as well as its own random access the have the feature of bi directional as well as its own okay so there are five type of iterators fine this i tell you there are five type of iterators and i just show that okay uh, the feature of this have all the feature this have the fe all the feature of bi directional bi directional have the feature of forward forward have the feature of input and output means uh, that can perform the task what these people can do fine okay yeah we will come to uh, divya we will come to that at the end only at the end only we will come to the mang problems operations supported by iterators so okay there are various operations which are supported by iterators like input operator is uh, support the read we can read the data with the help of this iterator and uh, we can increment it we can perform some comparison also output output iterator can only write the data in in this iterator with the help of this iterator wherever this is pointing we can update the data over there we can write the data over there but we cannot read see we cannot read the data this is the main difference forward we can perform both see forward iterator we can read the data and we can write both we can do other operations also we can do over the forward iterator bi directional now you can go to the uh, you can go uh, forward and backward both direction okay so that's why this is used in list list is a doubly linked list and in map multi map set multi set so we can use this bi directional iterator random access can be used in vectors also vectors vectors are just like array where we can access the element directly with the help of this square braces you can see at least one thing this have all the features which are in this this have all the feature which are in this this have all the feature which are in these two you can see like this have only this can only read the data and this can only write the data but this can perform both this these also can perform both and this have other features also like this can work on different other data structures fine okay now let's perform some operations let's perform the operations on the on the iterators so first operation is the begin we have already check out this function begin and end begin and end we have already done okay let me let me show some code to you you people please tell me what will be the output for that so let me write some code over here for practice purpose so that you can tell me what will be the output okay you people please tell me uh, i'm i'm taking a vector okay first of all let me take a vector let me replace this complete it code i have taken a vector over here i have taken i have declared just one vector over here and uh, let's perform some operation over this you please tell me what we are doing actually over here what will be the output you need to tell me the output so i'm writing some code over here you need to tell me the output the, with the help of this i will 
you will be learning many things how to use them use these uh, iterators first of all okay i just write this code can you tell me what will be the output for this code can you check out can you check out and tell me what will be the output for this code divya we will solve the mang problem at the end let's first cover this thing okay so i'm covering in very very detail actually but the benefit is that after after this series you do not need to go anywhere you do not need to go anywhere for c++ stl only only 8 days 8 sessions can you tell me the output everybody please try that is the that is important otherwise you can ask the question okay if you will ask me the question then we will be connecting better way you need to ask the question otherwise how we will be connecting maybe i am telling different things and you are understanding different things so this will be means uh, the session will be go crazy so people are replying 1 2 3 4 5 because this is the same code with which we have discussed earlier also here is a vector we define or you can say array and uh, we we take a iterator which is starting from the first element begin begin will give the address of the starting element and will give the element address of the address of this location which is past the last element which is past the last element and is not giving us the address of last element no and is giving the address of immediate next element to the past last element okay uh, this is how they define the end function and we just we are going through each element we are printing the data yes the output should be 1 2 3 4 5 let's run it and let's check out it let me run this code and let's see yes this is printing 1 2 3 4 5 yes this is printing 1 2 3 4 5 okay fine let me add more function over here 5 is not equal to 5 what do you want to say fazan okay clear fine so let me add more thing in this i will keep adding you please keep trying okay so i am i will be keep removing this part i will be using vector I, uh, there will be some function over here you, actually rather than begin rather than begin and end i will be using different functions i will tell you about them but you need to tell me the output okay so i'm replacing this uh, this part okay okay fine so let me take the complete one so that uh, you can read the comments also this will also help us motive is that you understand all the different functions we are using over here fine now in place of c what is the difference i am just telling you the difference this is earlier i was using the begin now i am using c begin earlier i was using the end now i am using the c end c stand for actually constant here so this will give me a iterator with the, with the help of this iterator i will not be able to change the value i will not be able to change the value over here okay this iterator this is a constant iterator this will not change the value this will not change the value okay otherwise we are not changing the value over here so we are just printing all the elements here now we generate a iterator with this with this function begin c begin function which is a constant iterator so what is a constant iterator if you don't want to change the value if you don't want to allow to change the value then you will use the constant iterator you, you will use the constant iterator even constant iterator are uh, faster than the ran, faster than the without constant if you are using the, uh, that is slower as compared to this one if you want to compare in that way also otherwise this will uh, this constant iterator will also return the iterator but these iterators will not be able to change the value in the array actually okay fine so the output will be same for this the output will be same because we are not changing the value we are just uh, we are just uh, we are not changing the value we are just accessing the elements 
we are just accessing the elements okay at the 26th line we have okay fine we printed two times we print bracket so i just remove the bracket and let's run it output is same 1 2 3 4 5 the difference i just want to show that okay this is the constant iterator this it the value we cannot change the value of the this vector now with the help of this iterator okay fine let me add more in this this will be more interesting so again i'm replacing this part from here i'm adding i'm changing these functions these functions are generating different type of iterators these functions are generating different type of iterator like this generate the constant iterator okay and uh, let me write one more over here fine okay i just you can see here i write r begin and r end reverse begin and reverse end r stand for reverse reverse begin and reverse end so this will this reverse begin will give me the address of the last element Okay, this reverse begin function will give me the iterator. This will generate a iterator which is pointing to the last element. This will generate a iterator which is pointing to the element just before the first element. This end and do not point to the last element. Reverse in reverse you are looking the end. In reverse you are looking the end. So this is pointing here. R end is pointing here. R begin is pointing here can you tell me can you tell me what will be the output for this code can you tell me what will be the output for this code please try and keep replying please keep trying and keep replying that will be requiring we will not leave anything i will be covering all the functions all the functions i will be covering see i'm covering everything in very detail one thing let me tell you but that doesn't mean that okay this will be the fastest series also if you are covering everything very detailed means i'm covering all the functions i'm covering all the functions related to one one thing and i'm covering all the things but just in seven to eight days i will take okay everything will be covered everything will be covered in this series so okay vishal is saying that the output should be the output should be in reverse because you are starting from the last and uh, you are going till the this just past the you are starting from the 5 and moving back actually uh, see if you will perform i++ over here the, the iterator is moving left side i am not doing minus minus it if you will do this is a reverse this is reverse iterator this is reverse iterator starting from the last and moving this reverse manner they are moving in reverse manner so if we run it yes you are right that should print the element in reverse manner 5 4 3 2 1 important thing you note you can notice that we are not decreasing we are not decreasing we are here this how this is working this is when you are incrementing this will move in reverse manner this will move in reverse manner that's it so if you will increment this will move in reverse manner fine okay let go through all the function let's don't don't leave anything okay uh, let me uh, these are the most important one there is two more okay uh, okay let me add let me add these also let me cover let's cover each and everything why should we leave so again, I'm replacing this loop. You people keep trying. If you will try, if you will reply faster, then I can move faster. I just replace this now. R begin and R end with the constant. This is constant reverse begin. Constant reverse end. Can you tell me the output? Constant reverse begin, constant reverse end. Can you tell me the output? One output and I will move on. One output from you people, I will move on covering all the functions covering all the functions what should be the output this is the constant but in reverse manner we cannot change the value now this is pointing to here cr begin is pointing to here 
this will generate an iterator which will be pointing here. Actually, it will be pointing here. But with the help of this iterator, we cannot, cannot change the value actually. So this is just a constant and yes, Mandeep. Uh, yeah. If we will try to change the value and that will give the error, yes. You can try it. So this otherwise this right now we are just printing the value that will print the value 54321. Okay, fine. Let me take other code and uh, you please keep helping me. I'm adding more stuff. Slowly, slowly, I will keep. I will increase the complexity also. Slowly, slowly, I will. Keep, I will increase the complexity also. Please tell me what will be the output over here. Please tell me what will be the output over here. So we now this time see. I am just going. I have taken a variable over here, and uh, I am going through all the elements. Okay. So this is here. This square braces are just this this is the operation we are performing over okay this is the thing we know how to access the elements with the help of the square braces okay in the vector so this is the common thing i think uh, let me add one more thing other thing last thing from the from this part actually last thing okay what about this one what this will return so this, this syntax we will use lots of time. You will find out this syntax. Print, we are printing the elements, okay, with different ways. This is one of the most famous way we will keep printing the elements. This is one of the most famous way. So what we are doing over here, we are taking the elements from, from this vector, one by one element, and we are printing them. So this is the one way we can go through all the elements one by one in the vector and we are printing those elements. We are, we are taking the element in this variable. We are taking the elements from like two. First num will be having two value. This num variable will be having two, sorry, one value. And then this will be having two value, then three, then four, then five. So this is the, the, this is the one short way to traverse the elements in an array. Okay, we will be using this syntax lots of time. So uh, I will not discuss this stuff later on. As the complexity will increase, I will not discuss this thing again to you people. Right now I'm covering everything step by step. So yes, this is just, we are taking the elements one by one and we are just printing them. Okay, fine. Okay, uh, if we, we do not run the code actually. Okay, let me erase the board. You please asking the keep asking the questions also. So I put end end operator over here. Just earlier I do not put the end operator. So this thing also you will find out that okay we are putting end operator. What is the use of this end operator is now this time this this time actually earlier what we were doing we were generating we we were copying the element. We copy one element. Okay earlier this end operator was not there. I am talking when end operator is not there. What was happening? You were co you copy one inside this variable. Then you copy two. Then you copy three. Then you copy four. Then you copy five. You copy all the elements one by one in num earlier. But if you are putting end operator, what you are doing, see what you are doing now. You are not copying the element now. You are not copying the element in this variable. Your your num your you you are pointing this num over here. You are pointing the, the same num over here, here, then here, then here. So copy operation is again time consuming. That is time consuming. Okay. This will increase the time complexity. Okay. And uh, this will not increase your time complexity. You can save the time complexity over here. You can save the time complexity over here. So now 
this name is just you are assigning a different name to these different locations that's it do you understand what the difference between if you are using and and if you are not using and simple thing is that if you are using and that is faster that is faster as compared to if you are not using and and operator okay m percent sorry m percent operator fine okay so these are a different way how you can okay or uh, divya is asking again just i'm telling you that okay if i'm writing not writing num a, m percent this then still the output is same but now we are copying the element one we copy into variable num then we print it two we copy into num we print it three we copy into num we print it four we copy into num we print it five we print copy into num we print it we copying one by one element this statement is pre copying the element from vector this array to this variable and then we are printing but if we are writing and now you are not copying the element you are not bringing the element from the array copying in the variable you do you just this you are just pointing this name now you are using reference now you are giving the reference you are, you are saying that this location name is num next time this location name is num2 next time three this location name in the array is num this location name is num this location name is num so you are not not copy operation is not performed here so that's why this syntax is faster to access the elements inside the array this syntax is faster okay you will find out this syntax also when we will code the bigger codes this is the only thing i tell you that that's it keep asking the questions keep replying again let me tell you let me remind you yes i'm covering the things in detail if you attended my dsa foundation course in dsa foundation course i i do not cover let me tell you i do not cover the things in very very detail because my motive in dsa foundation course if you have not attended you can uh, check out on youtube playlist on i neuron and we have completed the complete dsa foundation for bank companies for product based company you can check out that but there i do not i covered the many all the important concepts but i do not go very very detail okay here right now for this is for this course i'm going to very detail okay so that is required actually let me let me tell you the truth is that i could design this co course like that okay i just give you the overview i could finish the complete stl in one day you give me one hour i will complete it you give me one hour i will complete it okay you will find out on internet also many on many channels you will find out like that way in one hour you are completing complete stl okay but uh, when you will be using them really then if you will you will be confident after this series you will not feel like that okay what new operators are coming and is coming another function r r begin is coming c r begin is coming then you will not get afraid from those people after this series because everything will be you will be knowing each and every everything all these functions will be you will be familiar with okay although this course must be paid course see this course must be paid course the reason is that first thing is that because we, i'm covering in everything very detail and if i'm providing it on youtube people don't like the detailed courses in free let me tell you people don't like the paid courses they they don't like free courses to be very detailed they just want that okay like uh, i have seen some ads on internet in uh, in 10 minutes i will make you master of that in 10 rupees i will make you master of that that thing you give me work, one workshop two hours you will be you will you will be master of ai so people actually usually actually people at the back of the mind they believe these things okay but that is not reality reality is this you need to put the work you need to put the hard work you need to go through all that stuff okay so i'm giving you taste of the dsa where advanced dsa we need to grill ourselves believe me we need to grill ourselves to be get place in product based company if that is not if that is uh, that much easy then uh, why means uh, 
maximum people out of 196 percent people are not going over there so we need to grill and right now for this course uh, this course i'm uh, going through all the all the stuff so stay with me till the end stay with me till the end and uh, Okay, Bishal. Okay, Anwar is asking. Anwar is asking that. Okay, we are making a copy of sir. No, we are not making copy of num. It's like a okay. Uh, it's like a uh, it's a like a common name. Num is a name. First, I assign it to to this data one. Then I assign this name to this. Then I assign this name to this location. Then I assign this name to this location. Then I assign this name to this location. To every location, I am assigning the same name. Okay, that will consume less time as compared to if I copy all this data from here and into this variable and then print it. Now, with the help of this, I'm just assigning the name to this location. After that, I can uh, just print the data over here. Then assigning the, I change the name. I say that num is the name of this location. Num is the name, num is pointing here. Num is pointing here. Num is pointing here. That's it. Okay, so now we are pointing to different element rather than copy paste copy paste if i am not writing this ampersand then i am copying pasting copy pasting from the array to this variable and then i am printing okay there are different way to print the element that's it so i have promised for going to into detail so i will go in detail only okay fine okay let me go back to the ppt so we know now Till now, we know many things like uh, we know that, okay, uh, we know about the begin and end. Even we know different type of begin and end. R begin, R end, CR begin, CR end, CR end. We know different type of begin and end functions. These functions are generating the iterators. Some iterators are pointing to the starting, like begin, it, begin function is gen generating the iterator. Iterator is nothing, just the address. Okay, just like a pointers. They are generating the address, we, uh, starting element address, and is generating the address of the address of the location which is past the last element, which is past the last element. See, this is a, this pointer. This will generate a pointer which is pointing to the element that follow the last element. After the last element, this will point. This pointer will point the pointer which is generated by this function. The, the pointer generated by this function will point to the first element, initial element. This we know. Even we know various versions also. R begin, R end, C, R begin, C, R end, C begin, C end, C begin, C end. We know different type of begin and end uh, functions now. Okay, fine. Another function, another operation you can perform with the iterator is, is the advance. If you want to move, if you want to, what, what advance says that? Increment the iterator, in, increment the iterator position to a specific number mentioned in the argument. So here we have two arguments. One is this distance. One is the iterator itself. So the, what this function is doing? This function is changing the position of this iterator. How much position will be changed? Depend upon this number. Like if the value is three, then uh, if I'm at first location, I will be at the fourth location. One plus three, I will be at fourth location. Okay, so advance, we are just moving from one location to another. Okay, can you please tell me? So now I will not do this all everything myself. You need to you need to tell me. You need to try it yourself. Okay, I'm taking a vector once again. Let me delete all this stuff. Let me delete all this stuff from here. Let me delete. So, okay, we have blank everything over now, over here. Let me erase also from whatever is written over here. I'm writing some code to show you the advanced function now for the clarity of advanced function. So, I'm taking a vector again, an array, that's it. And, uh, okay, I'm taking a iterator. I'm taking a iterator. So, this is my old way, old way how I, I we can declare the iterator. So vector, vector int colon colon keyword iterator name of the iterator name of the iterator is PTR and we know about the begin now 
so you know that where ptr will be pointing in this array you know now this statement this statement you know now okay now i'm calling a function advance i'm calling a function advance this function is called after calling this function can you people tell me what will be the output okay i'm i'm writing the code for display this will display the array this will display this will display some data can you tell me what what is the data this will display so now you know the advance function i tell you that ptr is pointing here right now you know this thing ptr is pointing here ptr is pointing here ptr is pointing to the begin this ptr is the name of the iterator and uh, this is the distance that will cover this is the distance from this pointer this is the distance this will cover after this what will be the position of the iterator can you tell me what will be the output what will be the position of that iterator and at that position we will print the value where will be our iterator then what will be the output can you tell me please write in the chat box yeah divya i'm coming to your question before that you please answer my question let me take your question also sir uh, we want free course but the classes must be interactive like this yeah divya i'm trying to make it interactive but uh, uh, i'm telling the truth that okay uh, these classes are very detailed one only uh, this require great motivation to stay in the class because uh, because we are not paying anything pay sometime paying the money also give us motivation that okay kuch paisa humne diya hai to kuch hame pad lete hain lekin yahan pe humne kuch nahi diya hai to wo motivation bhi nahi hai hamare paas so other motivation is required from you people side because we are covering now in depth believe me there is no shortcut believe me there is no shortcut to go to the product based company for anything actually there is no shortcut the people are so showing that okay in 10 minutes they will do that in in uh, one day they will do that 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 is not uh, happening actually in real in real life they are just uh, they are just uh, taking the benefit of our brain okay you are you are saying that output should be 4 let's let me run this code and let me see the output should be 4 or not after this session i will take the feedback from you people like uh, should i go okay maybe yeah, right now you can give me the feedback should i go like this way in very detail or uh, if you feel that okay uh, i should make it little compress one you please let me know so i will move according to that also i will let, make little modifications in the next sessions according to that if you feel that okay it's we are too much going in detail then uh, i can modify according to that also fine okay yes you are right this is printing four actually yes after this advance function this iterator will point out here we just advance the iterator so this is the function which is advancing our iterator and uh, we are printing the value over that that's it that's it fine okay i'm coming back to my ppt and let's go through the next function next operation which we can perform next operation is the next op the name is itself next the the operation name is itself next which we can perform over the iterator so what this will do this will again do the same thing this will move our iterator to the nth nth distance okay this will move our our iterator to, to the nth distance okay and next one is the previous one this is the reverse of the next this is the reverse of the next means this will move to the opposite direction previous one if i am at the fifth location and if i am mentioning two here so i will come to the third location i will come to the third location this is the previous we are moving back side okay and next one is the okay we will talk about inserter later on that let, let me show you the code for this one also so that you can try this if you can give me the output of this code let me go to the coding screen and uh, okay
so i'm replacing this okay let me replace this code one by one step so that you can you can relate that thing so i just blank my screen over here okay and uh, i'm taking a vector i'm taking a vector fine and after taking a vector i'm uh, taking a iterator declared declaring the iterator this time with the help of auto with the help of auto i am declaring the iterator so you know that okay what this is doing you know now that what this is doing and uh, you know i am declaring another iterator also you know this also what this iterator is doing what where this iterator is pointing you know this also and uh, you can ask me if you don't know you can ask me otherwise okay you must be knowing if you understand the previous stuff now okay we apply the next function and uh, we get some value in this new iterator and uh, let me apply the previous function also previous operation also and if i'm applying previous operation again we are doing some operation fine and uh, now i'm just printing the values let me print the values of this new new iterators I just print the values. Print the value of this iterator next. Print the value of this iterator previous. That's it. Can you tell me? Can you tell me what should be the output for this? You people, please tell me. You need to try. You need to try. what will be the output four and uh, divya is saying four and two vishal is saying four and three let's see okay uh, our this iterator is pointing to the beginning you know this thing now we will be keep using previous stuff what we are learning so this iterator is pointing ftr i just give the name ftr you know that iterator can be defined with auto also directly you don't need to worry about complete syntax so this iterator is pointing where past the last element past the not the last element past the last element slowly slowly you will be very good at it, at that these stuffs you will be very good slowly slowly now we are taking a new iterator and what will be the value of that whatever value we will get from here this is generating a new iterator and the, the, that value will be here so what we are doing three steps we are moving forward here Three steps: one plus three, four. PTR will be here after performing this. And the previous four steps, we are coming back. We are here right now. One, two, three, four. So FTR will be here. We are see. We are not at the end. We are back is not returning. Back is not giving the address of last element. Back. and is giving the address of past the last element okay this is important this is important so yes what this will print print 4 and 2 these are the updated values so let's check out let's run this code and let's check out so we are running this code and uh, and bring my screen up yes this is printing 4 and 2 you can check out 4 and 2 is printed over here 4 for ptr and 2 for f ftr so now uh, uh, you know next and previous operations also last operation is the last operation is the inserter last operation is the inserter nothing just this will if you want to if you want to insert some element at a particular location that, then you can use the inserter you want to insert a element at particular location you want to move your iterator to a particular location where you want to insert the element actually so two arguments are here one is the container you need to pass container in which you want to insert the element and right now the what is the position of your iterator what is the position of your iterator you need to pass that position and uh, on which it, it uh, this iterator belong to which container that container also you need to pass so this will actually what this is doing that this function is used to insert the element at any position at any position in the in the container 
So it, it accepts two argument, one is the container and one is the and iterated to position where the elements you, you want to insert. So this will, you are telling, okay, uh, where in this container you want to insert the element. So with the help of this, we can insert the element at this position, this iterator position we can insert in this container. Okay, let's try this. Let's try to implement this operation also. Last operation, last operation from the iterator. So let's do this also. Welcome Rahul here, welcome. So this is going to, this is not going to be easy series little bit because we are going in depth. So you need to be, you need to be have patience in this series because everything we are covering in depth. Fine, okay. So let me de delete all this stuff again so that we can connect with the code what I'm writing over here. So first of all, okay, I'm taking the vector. I'm taking the vector. And after that, okay, what I'm doing, just I'm printing the element. I'm printing the original, original vector so that I can show you the difference. After that, I will insert one new element. So this code, nothing. Don't need to worry about this code. This code is printing the element, printing our array. You know, you know about this code actually. You know about this code. Let me run this code. Let me show you. This is printing the, this is printing our vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One more thing I, actually we have new one, new one thing we have. One constant also we have over here. We can put constant also over here also we can put constant. What is the benefit of writing constant here? Now, this num is pointing here, but we cannot change the value. This value we cannot change. With the help of this num, we cannot change the value. Okay. So this is making it constant. If you want, uh, I mean, safe code, then we can, if you don't want to make, if you don't want that, okay, anybody make changes in this, in this array, that can be dangerous. Maybe you want to uh, send this message to the future programmers who are going to work in this, the same code. You can mention that, okay, please, I'm using the constant. I don't want to make any changes over here. Due to this accidentally, if you will make changes, then there will be a problem. So you're just you creating the constant. You, this loop you already know now. We are going through all the elements. But this num now will not be able to change the elements due to this constant. This is the only difference over here. We will be knowing each and every every step over here. Just this is printing. Nothing. This is just printing for the original uh, original vector. Now let's insert the now let's let me let me insert the let me insert let me define a single variable to insert i'm going to insert an element so i'm taking an element declaring one element over here so i just take a new element whose value is 10 i will insert that in this vector with the help of inserter function so let me use that inserter function so i'm using this inserter function now to insert the element so i uh, so uh, i i want to insert this element new element at which position at which position at uh, second position in the vector at the from starting to second means actually at the third position we want to insert okay so this will actually give give the address of third position this will give the address of third position where we want to insert that's it just assign the element to this this iterator just assigning the value this new data new value 10 to this iterator this iterator is generated by this operation inserter operation inserter operation help us to insert the new element at a particular location Okay, so we are inserting 10 at this particular location into our, this vector, into our, this container. Okay, that's it. So with the help of these two statements, now we can insert the element. This is generating this operation, this function is generating this iterator. 
now we can store the value at this iterator whatever new element we want to store that's it so can you tell me can you tell me what will be the output let me print this array let me print now this modified array so i am writing the code for that we are printing just after that we are just printing the modified array we are printing the modified array here in this code we are printing the modified array can you tell me what should be the output please please tell me what should be the output yeah there is a one question from uh, divya divya let me take that question also and x is address of container sir in inserter okay there is another question from divya fine there is two question let me take that before that okay tell me first of all what should be the output initially the value is 1 2 3 4 5 we inserted a new element 10 how we inserted that uh, this inserter operation actually give we tell the we tell the location where that need to insert the element and we in which container that need to insert the element we tell them and he just this operation just create a iterator which is pointing to a location where we can insert the element where we can insert the element that's it so what you think so this part is printing the elements can you tell me what should be the output what should be the output mandeep is saying 1 2 10 3 4 5 let's check out and bishal is also saying 1 2 10 4 5 yeah, uh, you people are replying that's great thing that uh, that is actually motivating me also to work to go in detail in this series let me tell you uh, if you will uh, if you will not if i will not get the reply then i will try that okay i will summarize the things faster way but if i will be keep kept getting reply from you people then i will keep going to explore each and everything this will not take more than 2 weeks 8 days 7 to 8 days everything will be finish and let me give you one one another guarantee also after this series little you just just do practice because everything is covered everything is covered there are many company they will hire you for this skill itself there are many company they will hire you for language they just ask about the language okay they don't want uh, service based company don't want uh, don't want problem solving skill because they are they are building the product for other people not they are building product for themselves so they don't worry about the dsa they don't ask the dsa they will hire you for this thing itself and uh, if you are very good at this uh, at a particular language then after 2 to 3 years you will get start getting good packages also fine if you have 2 to 3 experience in in that particular language fine so this is printing 1 2 10 at third position we printed the 10 actually okay at this position uh, we at uh, so this will print actually this will print before 3 of at third position this is printing the 10 actually okay other element will be shifted further fine okay so now you understand how inserter operation is working that's it okay let me take uh, okay one question is here let me take one or one or two question from divya then we will move on for so first question is uh, related to constant uh, divya is asking okay you have put constant here then uh, i'm not changing the value right now divya i'm not changing the value right now i'm printing the value i'm printing the value okay i'm printing the value over here i'm inside this loop with the help of this num i'm not changing the value i'm not changing the value i'm just printing the value whatever value you already updated the value over here you already updated the value over here in this vec vector in this array you have updated the value with the help of these two statement after that i'm just printing in this loop is just printing so i'm not uh, changing the value of the vector using this num okay one thing and uh, i'm using auto so you can use uh, the means auto can be used if you don't know the data type although you know the data type integer you know that the elements are integer over here you can write integer also in place of this auto usually we uh, in in uh, com competitive programming mainly we prefer to use the auto because uh, that is faster we do not need to remember what was the data type earlier 
for which we are what was the data type of the, this vector for which we were accessing the elements so auto can be used where you just want to skip the data type otherwise you need to mention the data type so right now this vector was of integer type so i mention integer if you don't want to mention data type you can use the auto okay you can use the auto we are going to wind up fashion we are going to wind up this the session how our will be two uh, if some topic will not be covered let's suppose in this session like pair i will cover tomorrow vectors and pairs we will start tomorrow okay but uh, every session will be of two two uh, two hours only and eight hour maximum hour, um, eight we eight classes maximum i will take everything in detail we will finish fine okay uh, let me come back to my ppt we gone through all the operations actually there is no more operation in the iterators we finish them great there might be one question uh, nobody ask me actually what is the difference then between next and advance so what is the difference between advance is also moving next is also moving the 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 difference is that okay advance will not create a new iterator next will create a new iterator when you will use the next then you will use create a new iterator okay let me show you one example for this also let me go to this coding part again let me erase everything i'm writing some code over here again i'm taking a vector please be with me iterator are almost finish and uh, okay i'm uh, using the advance function now let me use the advance function so let me use the advance function so see i'm just uh, declaring a so this uh, this iterator is having the starting address of this this vector okay we are using begin you know about this line you know about this line now now i am declaring the okay this is not the advance actually okay i am now i am using the advance function advance operation so right now i am at the beginning due to this statement i am at the beginning okay this advance function what this is doing is right now this iterator at is here after this this iterator will be three step further this will be here after this this is not generating this function this operation is not generating any new new iterator okay this is not generating this is updating the previous one the previous one move from here to here but in the case of if we, if we will see in the case of next we are generating a new iterator okay let me first print the value over here let me just print the value over here so let me print the value or let me run this code so this will print four this printing for you know why you know you already know how advance function works and uh, i'm also now writing the code for the next so i'm writing the code for the next just i want to compare both of them after this two lines everything will be clear this is the difference see this is the difference now i'm right here is this is the difference see when you call the advance function this update the previous iterator itself previous iterator itself is updated but when you call the next function then you, new iterator is generated new iterator will be generated that will be pointing to the fourth location okay and if you will print this this will also print what the same fourth element but this will also print see let me run this code this will also print the same element fourth element both are printing four over here see advance is also printing four next is also printing four so what is the difference okay i'm i'm finishing it in advance is not returning anything this is not returning any any iterator next is returning a iterator next is returning a iterator which is pointing to this this location advance is having a iterator this is updating the same same iterator to this location do you do you understand this is 
updating the same iterator this is generating a new iterator which is pointing to this location okay this is the only difference between advance and next any doubt in this please ask otherwise that's it so let me go back to the ppt that's it for today actually uh, that's it about the iterators we finish about the iterator we will start with the pairs tomorrow and uh, uh, sorry uh, divya today i do not take the mang problem tomorrow definitely i will take the mang problem actually uh, iterators are we will use these iterators now you will not you will feel comfortable what you need to do let me tell you after this class you need to revise it you need to revise it otherwise uh, you will forget the things okay you need to make your notes because this is actual now practice is going on for the product product based companies actual classes are going on okay now you need to make the notes from this lecture then only you will remember actually otherwise you will forget okay make your notes and uh, after that you will see that in future while studying dsa also you will be using these different type of loops different type of iterator functions all that stuff and constant all that stuff will come but you will not get afraid of them but you will not get because you know all that stuff now okay and there is no specific question from like using the iterator like this now the container will start pair is a container but pair is a container from vector and pair i will take the mang problem tomorrow sorry for today uh, divya today i did not take the mang problem because uh, there was no mang problem from iterator particularly and uh, there is no mang problem actually and from pair i will take definitely from vectors i will take tomorrow i and uh, i hope you uh, you get uh, information from this session and if you like this session if you find this session useful then please like it and uh, please write in the comment section that will boost this session okay and this session is uh, is uh, the is the actual thing let me tell you which is required for the mang companies okay now i am not hiding anything from this series in dsa no doubt i just provide you fundamentals but that was also very important that also build your base the motive was building your base in dsa foundation course i give the name dsa foundation for master class you need to again that will be regress practice in master dsa course so the people who don't know okay uh, let me tell you i am coming up in march with master dsa course you can check out that course on our i neuron website let me show you over there so if you if you want to register in this you can go to the i neuron website just check out i neuron in the google and go to the website and go to the courses here in the courses and in the courses you can go to the boot camp and uh, there is a dsa over mention over here dsa mention over here so this is the mastering dsa course you can register for it the uh, uh, the uh, fee for this is 3750 but uh, one thing i can make you sure that you will not regret this amount because uh, if you will be serious if you will say that sir i am i am honest I, whatever you will give to me i will practice then i can make you sure that you nobody can stop you to go to the mang companies nobody can stop you because we are covering everything we are covering everything and you are doing practice nothing is left then they cannot ask out of the out of that they cannot ask something which is we don't know okay we will be covering everything and you are practicing i'm giving you problem then nobody can stop us so you can register for this you can apply for this course and in this course we will go in very detail first step of this c++ stl i am providing in free which is this series already going on c++ stl i will use that in this course okay i will tell here also in this course because there will be new students who don't know about that so i will i will keep covering c++ stl java collections java people because i will be covering three languages in this course one is c++ java and python so i need to tell to the people c++ stl also i need to tell to the people java collections also i need to tell to the people python inbuilt functions also okay i will tell them i will keep using them the 
the places where I will be using them, there I will be keep explaining them. Right now, I'm coming with the complete course that is mastering C++ STL. So there you will feel comfortable. If you are going for this course, you will feel very comfortable because I'm covering in very, very detail, very, very detail. Fine. Okay. That's it for today. Let me take one or two more questions you have written. Divya is asking, I'm, I am able to predict the output, but uh, write code scratch is feeling uh, different, sir. Yes, that required practice, Divya. Uh, I will be giving, in uh, if we talk about this course, I will be giving the easy problem, one medium, one is hard. Easy problem will build this confidence. This, this problem will be solved in the easy problem. Okay. So if you will solve the easy problem, this, this thing will go. Then the logic building will come, which will be requiring in medium level questions. Most of the companies ask only medium. Even Google also ask only medium only. Okay. Rarely they ask the question from the hard. Okay. Rarely. So although we will be covering all the three, easy, medium, hard, because hard will push your limits. Hard will further push your limits. That is required. Okay. So this fear will go away. Don't worry. One last question I'm taking that is from Faison. Faison is asking after this series collection, sir. Yes. If I will be getting time, then Java collections will be covered. Yes. Yes. Uh, I will definitely come with Java collections after this C++ STL series. Yes, Faison. But you can learn this skill also. Be, be with me. Okay. Uh, I feel also means uh, when you people reply, let me tell you, uh, this become easy for me to deliver the lecture also because the reply is coming then this become really easy if nobody is talking then this become very difficult let me tell the truth also okay so please stay with me let's have this skill also mastering c++ still so let's have this skill also only two weeks eight days okay fine uh, i'm doing still for just knowledge okay problem but i think i am more inclined toward collections Okay, uh, Faison, I will come with that series. Definitely, most probably, I cannot promise completely, but uh, most probably I will come. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you, thank you everyone be, for being with me for, for the complete session. I believe uh, you will find this really helpful for you. Okay, Divya. Bye-bye, take care, good night. We will meet tomorrow with vectors and pairs. And I will take the man problems. Yes. Bye-bye. Take care. I'm ending the session.